We've seen protesters block freeways and streets many times when they're out protesting, trying to get their uh, their agenda or a particular thing out there and some attention to it. This one actually has a story behind it that maybe you don't always hear. That one man in the striped shirt there that's snatching signs from these climate protesters in Maryland is apparently uh, on parole and he needs to get to his job or else he violates said parole and then goes to jail. I think that's a story that, or at least a, a background that people can um, <laughs> To have some sympathy towards. Uh, so, but they stayed sitting there. He's getting the fights and arguing with them. And there's details on this that actually end up being even more sad for this guy. So, there's one went down. The Maryland State Police, they arrested 14 climate protesters on Monday after they shut down this highway in DC, that's uh, in the DC area that's amid the 4th of July traffic, making it even worse. MSP and Montgomery County Police responded to the scene around 1230 on Monday and found several protesters sitting on the ground on the inner loop of the I 495 in Montgomery County. And of course, they were blocking traffic. Um, so that group was uh, was out protesting, and they were urging Biden to declare a climate emergency. And they aim to urge him to declare this, and that's according to their website. We have to get in people's way, is what Paul Severance, who's an organizer with them, told the Bethesda Beat. That's the only way to make change. So. As it comes from the outcome from this with the guy on parole, this is where the more sad news, at least for me, comes. I'm not sure if this was in direct violation, but this is what happened to this guy. The man that was fighting with them, caught on video, TJ Jones, um, he worked uh, for the company News to Share, that's who recorded this, explained that he's on parole and would be reincarcerated if he was late for work. The clip shows him getting increasingly desperate and confrontational. Here's the bad part. He was eventually arrested by Maryland State Troopers. I'm not sure if it's because he was fighting with them and snatching signs and all that, or if he was arrested later because he didn't make his job. We never found out exactly. But this is one of those things, Dan, and it happens in so many protests. Hey, let's block the freeway, hey, let's block off the streets. There's so many people, and I get the point. You're looking for the attention around the thing that you're protesting, around your principles and what you want to bring more attention to. But what's the next step? Who does this help? Does it get you anywhere? Um, and I hadn't really said it before, and I thought, I was like, eh, I wish we had a better way. But maybe there isn't. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I think the best way to explain some of these points is through news stories like this. And so that way it like makes the pill go down a little bit easier because you see a point, you see a time when you agree with both sides, you agree with the climate protesters, of course, and that there needs to be action and that people need to notice. At the same time, this person who is uh, close to violating their parole through no fault of their own because they're just trying to do the right thing, get to work. And you know, you see him begging like one lane, one lane, please, I don't want to go back to jail. I mean, I, I don't love that he's like yelling at protesters and like trying to move them, attacking their signs, but that's desperation, desperation of a man who fears the uh, repercussions of not being able to trust that his boss will just let him off easy when he says that there are protesters blocking me on the highway and I can't make it to work. Please don't get me in trouble or whatever. Uh, the idea that like he's going to be sent back to a place, this prison that he doesn't want to go to that has horrendous conditions, this climate protesters are not making any positive change in that matter, so to speak, right. right? And so I always believe in, I'm a big proponent of protests, but they have to be targeted. They have to hit the people who are most affected when it hits the working class. Believe me, in non mainstream media and like alternative media on social media and other outlets where people in the working class, people of color are paying attention, this story sticks 
a lot more than the climate protesters do. They see those protests and they're like, man, all them doing is blocking the freeways. Like that's annoying me. And they you start to lose people in your potential political audience who should care about the damage that climate change is doing. So be careful about your tactics, target your tactics. And I, I have nothing but like my heart goes out to that man who is his life is altered because of this. Yeah, have a full plan, and maybe they do. And like I said, I didn't go to the deep details of their next steps and their next steps. But yeah, the folks that sometimes you're blocking on the freeway might actually agree with your principle, the things that you're protesting, if they weren't the ones that were the target of the protest. It's exactly what Dan's saying here, that maybe the folks that might be on your side, you're making some more enemies. And again, how does this change to then the powers that be to then giving a damn? Because they don't care about this guy or him trying to get to his job. At all. In fact, yeah, that, that guy has no power. That, that, that guy yeah. can't go to Joe Biden. Joe Biden's, unfortunately, this isn't the kind of country where we listen to parolees on their opinions on climate change. I think it might be a little bit of a better country if we had more people's opinions, especially listen to the opinions of those who have been most terrorized by our society and the carceral state and all the other systems in our country. But unfortunately, we don't have that. People only listen to oligarchs.